If you've followed the channel for the last few months, you'll know that we've moved house to a bungalow with electric radiators, and they are astonishingly expensive to run. Our bill in January was £755. In fact, we spent £1,170 on electricity from October the 8th when we moved in to the end of 2024. We've made some home improvements to improve our energy usage. So we've got new windows, we're avoiding the conservatory, and we've got better insulation. But it's just not sustainable spending so much on bills. It was time to make a decision about what to do about it. Do we get a heat pump or do we get solar panels and battery storage? For now, we've decided to go for the latter. So here is the start of our solar journey. So why do we want solar and a battery? With high bills, you can reduce the amount of electricity you're using, or you can generate electricity yourself. Actually, or you can move house, of course, but uh, I'm not gonna put that idea into my wife's head just yet. We'll go into the efficiency improvements we've made in another video. But for the moment, let's just talk about generating electricity. In our previous house, we had a small two kilowatt array and that was already there when we moved in. And we had a solar thermal system, which we installed. So when the sun was out, we were getting free hot water and heating with an air to air heat pump. In our new house, we have a clean slate to do whatever we want and crucially can afford. Most of our energy use happens early morning when all the radiators all kick in around the house. And that's obviously happening when energy is pretty expensive. So the plan is to charge a battery during the night when energy is cheap and then use that stored energy throughout the day, much of which will be in the morning when the radiators come on. And then on sunny days, the solar panels will start generating and power the house and we'll start recharging the battery. And if we're lucky, the battery will then get fully recharged and we'll start exporting the rest for 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So worst case scenario, a day with no sun at all will still be getting power at a cheap rate until the battery is depleted. It took a long time to make a decision on which installer I wanted to go for. So I wanted to do my research and I wanted to choose a company I trusted and were knowledgeable. And in the end, I went for Heatable, who you may have heard of. I'd already heard good things about Heatable from various people. They have a great reputation and you can look at all their five star reviews. They've got on Trustpilot, Google and all that. They're honest. They seem very honest anyway, because if you look at their YouTube channel, you'll see some great videos. And on one of them, uh, they're on site and pretty much everything goes wrong and they bent over backwards to sort it all. And it was quite a strange video, really, as most companies would want to hide all of that kind of stuff. But they're quite open about it. If something goes wrong, they sort it. I started talking to Heatable back in October at the Everything Electric show. I got a big quote on their big fancy touch screen and I started chatting to them. There was a lot of back and forth. I must have asked about 50 questions over the space of a few months and they answered everything with great detail and patience, crucially. Um, I was annoying even myself at the end of it. The install was not going to be cheap. Uh, my wife was against getting it done, to be honest, but uh, Heatable very kindly agreed to a big discount, which enabled us to go ahead. And the discount is based on cataloguing the whole process over the space of 18 months. So I'm going to be doing regular detailed videos about what we're generating and saving and all that and how it's working out for us. Heatable also offer interest-free finance up to three years, which is a massive bonus when you're talking about quite a big chunk of money, really. So choosing a reputable installer is really important and I've heard some horror stories. So a friend of mine had an installation done and the company went bankrupt, leaving them with a system that didn't work. And not many other installers want to help out in that situation either. So whoever you choose, the most important things to look out for is that they're MCS accredited. That's really important. You can't export what you generate if they're not MCS accredited. And also double check that they're HIES members because that means that they're backed by insurances to guarantee their work for a period of time, even if the installer goes bust. So uh, heatable installs have a two year HIES insurance backed warranty. So that's good for peace of mind. We agonized over this for literally months. For the panels, there wasn't really an issue. We were going to go for REA Fusion 2 by Facial Panels. REA are an Australian company, so the panels are designed and engineered there. They use Japanese cells. Uh, there's a 25-year warranty on them, and they're exclusive to Heatable in the UK. Apparently, these are particularly good in low light and with cloud cover, which is very useful for the UK, because most of our days are not like this. By Facial Panels are quite clever, as they get sunlight from the back of the panel as well. So obviously that's where the roof tiles are, but you do get a little bit of sunlight that bounces back. So there is still the possibility of getting a little bit of solar energy off the tile. We've gone for 30 panels. So we had two big choices. 
battery and the system type. To convert the solar energy, which is DC, to power that's usable for the house, that's AC, you need an inverter. And traditionally it's been common to connect all the panels to the inverter with DC. And in fact, that's what we had in our previous house. However, you can now get micro inverters. And as the name suggests, these are tiny inverters that live behind each of the panels. So with a traditional DC system, if there's some shading on one panel, that brings down the generation of every panel in that string. And a string is a group of panels all connected together. So you don't have that problem with micro inverters. So it also means that the energy coming down from the panels is already in AC. Heatable made a great video about this actually, which goes into far more detail. Um, however, micro inverters aren't cheap. So whatever efficiency gains you might get, it could be false economy to pay extra for them. And that's how I felt really when specking the system, because who knows how long we'll be at this house. And the next big choice was the battery. In fact, this was so tough, I might make a separate video about it. I think Heatable will install any battery you want, but at the time of recording, they prefer two. There's a Tesla Powerwall 3 and the Alpha ESS G3. They've narrowed it down to these two because they've installed hundreds of batteries from different brands, and these have the best balance between the features, the cost, and crucially, the support. So if you talk to any battery installer, they'll be very quick to tell you about the worst batteries based purely on the support nightmares they've had. Uh, given that time is money, commissioning a system, which means getting it up and running, is also a big deal. So apparently the Powerwall and the Alpha ESS are two of the best. Powerwall is such an amazing package and it could be argued it's a bit of a no-brainer really. The big thing for me is that it has a gateway and this means you can go completely off-grid. So if you have a power cut, your battery takes over and you would never know it in the house. You're just suddenly off-grid. So that's not currently the case with the Alpha, which doesn't have a gateway, although it can power one circuit in the house. So it's an emergency power supply for one circuit. The Powerwall also has an integrated heater, so it works fine in minus temperatures, whereas the Alpha will stop working if it gets too cold. However, the Powerwall is more expensive. So we found we could get a 20 kilowatt hour Alpha system, two batteries joined in parallel, for the same price as a 13.5 kilowatt hour Powerwall. And if we chose to expand the system at some point, that's also gonna be much cheaper with the Alpha. Given our power needs, that's what gave Alpha the edge for us, really. Both batteries are LFP, which is a great chemistry, no cobalt, so you can put away your memes of African kids mining. Um, they should also suffer less degradation, in theory. They're also obviously both IP65 rated, so they're happy to live outside. Of the two battery systems, we decided to go for Alpha. The Alpha has a 9.6 kilowatt hours usable capacity and a cycle life of 8,000. And that cycle life means Alpha guarantee that you can charge it to 100% and discharge it completely 8,000 times before you can expect the battery health to dip under 80%. And as we've all seen from EVs, batteries, large ones anyway, last ages. So people think about a phone only lasting a couple of years, but EVs and home storage is a completely different thing. So don't worry about that at all. Something else we agonized over for ages is the positioning of the batteries. This is the garage wall looking surprisingly clear at the moment. That would have been a perfect place to put batteries because they would have been warmer in winter, so less likely to shut down. However, we're south facing and this garage gets so hot even on a winter's day, it gets too hot in here. And I just have a feeling that that's probably not gonna be great for the batteries either. So for that reason, we decided to put the batteries on the outside wall, right next to where the incoming supply is. So we've already got a zappy on the side wall as well. So it just makes sense to put everything in the same place. And it's a kind of a corridor that we don't really use much anyway. We have a 1980s bungalow that's south facing. It's got quite a shallow roof pitch. There's a little bit of shading from trees, but generation should still be pretty good as there's decent space for loads of panels and they'll be east and west facing. The quote from Heatable goes into a lot of detail about how much we can expect to generate. Our annual bill is estimated as £3,237 and with solar it drops to 618 which is great. So the most important thing is obviously the cost of this system. For the 13.5 kilowatt solar system with the 20.2 kilowatt hours battery storage, which comprises two Alpha ESS inverters and two 10.1 kilowatt hour batteries connected in parallel, the quote came to £18,990, which is a lot of money, of course. But the quote is really detailed and it tells us how soon we can expect the investment to pay for itself. So when you're working out whether you want to do solar and battery storage, that's really, really helpful, of course. It says it'll pay for itself 
in about seven to eight years. And over 25 years, the investment value would be £55,877.27. Yes, but you move every three years, Andrew. You might be shouting at your screen right now. There's actually a good chance we'll stay here longer, actually, because our dog died recently and we've buried her just here. So my wife's reluctant to sell the house now. However, if we were to move, we could take the batteries with us. Um, in fact, having two batteries makes it easier because we could just decide to leave one for the next person and then take the other. I also feel that anything spent now is an investment anyway because it adds value to the house. Also, none of us know what will happen with energy costs in the future and it doesn't look like they're going to go down substantially anytime soon. So I feel it makes sense to get this done now anyway. Um, we don't need planning permission from the council here, but if you're in a conservation area or a listed building, then you will. So that made it quite easy for us. After months of discussions, all the delays caused by us, we uh, finally signed on the dotted line on the 31st of January and the G99 was sent and approved on the same day, Monday the 3rd of February. We thought we might have to wait months for that, but apparently UK power networks are really good in that regard. You may have to wait longer depending on your DNO. So what is a G99? It's the application your installer needs to make to get permission to connect solar panels or wind turbines to the grid. The DNO, that's a district network operator, may put limits on the amount of electricity you're allowed to export. You could fill your roof with panels and get an enormous battery thinking you can export it all and make a fortune, but the DNO just may not allow it as they don't want to overload the grid. In our case, UK Power Networks came back with an export limit of 10 kilowatts, which is absolutely fine for us because even with a 13.5 kilowatt potential array, we are unlikely to ever reach 10 kilowatts of export anyway, as the house consumes so much and we'd be putting excess power into the battery. Heatable are nationwide and they work with a series of trusted installers in various areas. Our installers came out to do a survey on the 4th of February and that survey was to confirm where we wanted to put the battery, measure up and then also work out the cable routing. And they also sent up their drone to take some lovely videos. Installation was then agreed for the 7th of April it would have been sooner, but we had other commitments. So what's next? We're now in April. Scaffolding has just gone up and we're all ready for the work to start in a few days. Looking at the weather, we seem to be blessed actually with sun for the week of the installation. So I'm extremely excited to start generating some homegrown energy and start making a dent in our bills. Finally. Um, you may be wondering why we've gone for solar and a battery first instead of a heat pump. And this was something else I agonised over. I agonised over a lot, but this is something else. I just felt it was better to get this done first for no real reason other than it being potentially less disruptive. A heat pump will require plumbing the whole house and that's a whole bunch of hassle. I just don't think we wanted to get into just at the moment. Solar and a battery just feels like a quicker win, I think. If you'd like to get a quote from Heatable, use the link mysteryv.co.uk slash solar for £150 off or mysteryv.co.uk slash battery for £75 off the install. You can also use the codes MrEV150 or MrEV75. I'll do a follow-up video about how I found working with them, but so far they've been absolutely fantastic and very patient. Uh, this is all a really big learning experience for me but they have been so good with explaining every facet of the system. It doesn't matter who I talk to, they all seem to know their stuff. What's clear from this whole process is just how addictive it can all get. Whatever solar or storage you can get, it reduces your reliance on importing expensive energy from the grid and means we're all importing and burning less gas. So whether the environment is a high priority to you or not, it's just a great thing to be more self-sufficient. So I cannot wait for installation to start and to catalogue the whole process. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back very soon. And I'm going to get down off the roof because I am terrified of heights.